Can I now call Omar Saif onto the stage? Omar. Hello. Uh, thank you for being here. I am visiting from Pakistan. I come from Lahore, which is not very different from Delhi, uh, though I haven't been out too much yet, but I hope to. Uh, my name is Umar Saif. I work as the chairman of the Punjab Information Technology Board. This is the Punjab on the Pakistan side, uh, and head all the public sector IT projects uh, in Punjab. Uh, Punjab in Pakistan is the largest province. If it was a country, it would be the ninth largest in the world. Um, so I, I, I come from an academic background. I've been a university professor all my life. Um, but in this last one year, which was my sabbatical year from the university, I sort of uh, started pretending to be a civil servant. Uh, so while coming here, I had to decide uh, whether I'm going to talk as a civil servant or a college professor. So I'll start out talking as a civil servant, um, telling you about various things the government of Punjab is doing, uh, which is all our advocacy policy work for a free internet, um, a lot of e-governance systems that we're developing for uh, better law and order, for transparency, we be, we, much like any we're building an open data platform, and so on and so forth. But I think what you like most is when I start talking to a college professor, which is the actual stuff that we've done. Uh, in this last one year, uh, we built a disease surveillance system at the scale of uh, the province of Punjab, which is about 120 million people. Um, and I'm going to walk you through this. And the reason we started building this disease surveillance system is because Punjab was affected by one of the worst dengue epidemics uh, in the world the year before last year. About 300,000 people were affected by dengue, out of which 21,000 people were confirmed dengue patients. Uh, Delhi also has a small dengue outbreak almost on a yearly basis, uh, and Lahore had a big one uh, in 2011. Uh, we had 16,000 patients just in Lahore. 352 people died in that year, so it was, a, it was just a disaster that we were not prepared to handle. And, uh, and, this, and we set up a helpline, and this is what that helpline volume of calls coming in looked like. There were basically two lessons. For one, we found out too late. By the time we found out that there's a dengue epidemic in Punjab, uh, lots of people had already been infected, and all we could do was damage control. And two, there was no spatial planning. Uh, so uh, much like India, Pakistan also doesn't have a spatial planning unit. There is no equivalent of a zip code. Uh, all you have is union council numbers, but a union council is about 10,000 households. So if you have an epidemic, you can't really localize it. You know, what do you localize it to? So that was sort of also a fundamental problem that we wrestled with. Uh, what we ended up doing, though, uh, was, was, was use two important Google technologies, and, 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 and that's why I chose to talk about this, uh, to track uh, the epidemic in this last year, once we'd been hit by, by this epidemic the year before, and, and, and did it quite successfully. Uh, as I told you, the year before last year, we had 21,000 confirmed patients, 352 deaths. In this last year, uh, we had only 350 confirmed patients and no deaths, which is phenomenal. You know, once you've had an, an epidemic like dengue, it typically stays on for a few years. So this was sort of just a human effort by the government uh, to, to prevent an epidemic from happening. And we did several things. Uh, for one, we'd set up health, emergency helplines that people could call in, get awareness about a disease like dengue. Um, we also started doing surveillance in all major hospitals. Uh, we started monitoring all the prevention activities. That's largely what I'm going to talk about. We started geotagging all the positive dengue lava reports that were coming through, which could contribute to an outbreak. And we also started uh, geotagging all the confirmed patients and started running early epidemic prediction systems to see if some, something's going to develop into an epidemic. So essentially what we wanted to do was to sort of try and catch the epidemic early uh, before it sort of develops into, into something serious that we then can't handle. Uh, what we started doing was, for one, uh, we had the government, the entire government kind of geared up trying to do different prevention activities. Uh, these were about 1,500 different field uh, workers 
uh, field officers who were doing prevention activities from the Department of Health to the city district government, uh, you know, to the fisheries department, to the, uh, to the solid waste management company, so on and so forth. And, and every day, the chief minister would take a meeting at about 6 a.m. and would ask the secretaries of different departments to present their progress from the previous day. And what that typically entailed was a series of pictures presented in a PowerPoint presentation of the various activities that they had performed to avert a dengue epidemic. Uh, so those pictures work quite well. In 2011, uh, the chief minister was pretty convinced that people are doing their work. But once they started showing the same pictures in 2012, he became quite suspicious. Uh, so he said, you know, these pictures have timestamps, but they can be manufactured, and I don't know where these pictures were taken, so I'm not convinced whether this work was actually done or not. Uh, so that's when the IT department was interested in developing a monitoring framework that would let us monitor the prevention activities. And in that, we developed a, an Android application and bought about 1,500 different Android phones for all the field workers and gave, gave out these phones installed with this application and asked them to take a picture and geotag every activity that they performed. So what we had at the end of that, and I'm going to now be more of a college professor and move to the real-life system that we had, so we give out the Android phones uh, uh, with this application installed to our field operators. And it was pretty sad in the first one week. This is how it looked like in the first one week. Uh, basically, nothing came through. This was an added chore for a lot of people uh, to do the prevention activity. And we weren't getting a lot of data coming through. But at the end of the dengue season, this is how the hall looked like. All these little pins, if you see them on the screen, are different prevention activities that were performed by different government departments. They were taking a picture of before they got there and, 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 and performed their prevention activity and, 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 and then took a picture of once the work was completed. Uh, it showed where, which agency, in this case the Lahore Waste Management Company, performed the activity, who did it, what kind of activity, date and time. All of that was time stamped by the application in our service, which is something that you can't fake. Uh, and, and, and I can keep clicking on these, and you'll keep seeing, you know, sort of the before and after activities of these. But at the end of the season, you'll notice that there are about 48,000 different activities that were performed in a period of three months. This is phenomenal work, you know, by different government agencies coming together, trying to avert another epidemic. But also, you know, really firm, reaffirmed our faith in the use of technology. These were people who otherwise would not use computers and PCs in their offices, but were happy to carry an Android phone to the field and take a picture of what they were doing. This is how the hall looked like, uh, if you're familiar with the geography of this reason, region. Uh, but if I zoom out, you'll see how Punjab looked like. And these are all these little clusters of different cities in Punjab. Uh, where different teams were working, performing prevention activities, and were geotagging them using their Android phones. And we were tracking all of this in real time. Uh, the other thing that we started doing, and we had a late monsoon in Lahore last year, uh, was that once we started getting confirmed dengue patients, we asked the entomologists who were in the field looking for dengue larva, which is a special kind of mosquito that could carry the disease, we asked them to also start geotagging all the instances of positive dengue larva reports. All the red pins here are positive dengue larva reports. These are all these mosquito larvas that spread the dengue uh, epidemic. Uh, so they were geotagging all of that. So the red pins are that. And then we, once we started getting confirmed patients coming to the hospitals, we had a protocol where someone from the hospital will go to the house of the confirmed patient and would geotag the house. Uh, the circle is a one-kilometer radius around the house of a confirmed dengue patient. That's the typical flight radius of a dengue mosquito. And you'll see a huge correlation of the red pins, which is the dengue larva, and the confirmed dengue patients. Right? And all of this was also being monitored in real time. So then we took this data and fed this into an early epidemic warning system. Uh, this is a spatial, spatial temporal statistical analyzer, similar to the one that's used by CDC in the U.S., the Center for Disease Control. This takes confirmed dengue patients coming in, statistically analyzes that, and sees if, if there's, an, there's sort of a, a spike, uh, a, a unanticipated spike in disease in, in certain locality and would flag that as an epidemic. So it gives you sort of a heads up of two to three weeks before an outbreak develops into an epidemic. So this is how the dengue season in Lahore in last year looked like. Uh, so this is a little... Uh, slider at the bottom of the screen. As I move the slider, you will see different outbreak alerts that the system generated over this period. We'll take these outbreak alerts, talk to the field operators, tell them to go to that place, uh, fog spray it or use chemical elimination, look for the dengue larva and eliminate it. 
And this went on, you know, for those few months uh, as, 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 as some of these, these alerts were generated and were communicated to the field teams. The last thing that we did, which was also interesting, this actually didn't take us much to develop. The early warning system was the crux of the work that we did was this tool which worked a lot like apartment presentation, but was a tool that the secretaries were using to present to the chief minister their prevention activities from the last day. So instead of using PowerPoint, they started using this. What it does is it tells you where the activity was performed and, and, and the pictorial evidence of that. And you can run it much like a slideshow, and it'll show you where the activity was performed and, 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 and would timestamp it and who did it and where and so on and so forth. And it'll also show you the picture. So this is essentially, you know, sort of the tool that, you know, the government was basically using to present their work to the chief minister. Uh, you can't forge timestamps in it, and, and, and it will tell you also where the work was performed. So having all of this, you know, was, was pretty successful. Uh, we could track all the work in real time. We could also, uh, you know, you could, we could track all the dengue uh, cases coming through, run it through an early warning system, and, and, and perform all these, uh, and, and then perform these prevention activities in real time. So this is essentially how the system looked like. This was pretty, pretty unprecedented at government scale to use something like this. Uh, MIT Tech Review did an article on this. We've had a couple of research papers come out of this and so on. And now we've made the system open source for the governments to use it. Actually, I think folks at IIT Daily have started looking at it for the, for the little outbreaks that you get in Daily year after year. Um, We've now also started working on sort of taking our national ID cards, which is very similar to the UIDs that India is experimenting with, and trying to sort of knit a special structure of Pakistan by just free-form text. This is addresses at the back of the national ID card to see if we can build a interactive sort of special structure of, of Pakistan, which you can query to find out uh, where someone lives. If they tell you the street address or the house address, can I somehow figure out how many houses are there in a street and how many streets exist in a town and so on and so forth. And we have now finally also started analyzing the CDR data, the call data records of different people, uh, where they move, how they call. This is anonymized, but you can take this data and, 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 and start analyzing it, because analyzing it for diseases that, de that are debilitating in nature, like dengue, because they affect your mobility pattern, and, and we know which people you typically call, where you move around, and so on and so forth, and where you are most uh, 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 likely to spread this disease. So having all these pieces in place, we finally have sort of a disease surveillance system at the scale of the ninth largest country of the world, uh, which was pretty successful in the sense that we didn't have any deaths last year. Thank you. Umar, if you just, you just stay there for a minute. Actually, one of the things that I think was the most incredible in that is uh, the great ideas how did you get a large number of civil servants and health officers to actually use that? Because I'm sure it's as difficult on that side of the border as it is here. Indeed. How did you get them to do it? Well, uh, for one, uh, uh, to be honest with you, I wasn't convinced that they would use it. Uh, and, and, and I showed you the, week, the, the, the map from the first week where we basically didn't get anything. And, and I have my sort of, you know, uh, uh, stories of struggles with different bureaucrats and politicians trying to convince them to use technology somehow. Uh, but I think the mobile phone presents an interesting opportunity. It's a device with some social value embedded in it. So one of the tricks that I used was to give out a phone, a smartphone, uh, with games installed on it and some, uh, and some free minutes. So their children could play games on the phone so they wouldn't break it or lose it. Okay. And it had some free minutes so they can call their families and friend, friends and so on and so forth. So this was a device with some social value embedded in it. Right? So it was in their interest to carry this phone and protect it. Right? And then taking a picture of the work that they've performed that the chief minister might look at uh, you know, was just an added bonus. Uh, and we've now started using this and, and sort of expanding the mandate of the system into what I call the mobile governance framework in Pakistan, where we're now beginning to monitor a lot of things using Android phones. Uh, I've bought thousands of Android mobile phones for various departments now, whether that's livestock or irrigation or the schools department. We ask the, the monitors of, uh, of, of different schools to carry these phones and report on teacher attendance. We use the same thing for intelligence services and so on and so forth. So I think there's a lot of... Uh, Yes, well, there's evidence. Uh, they, 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 they sent in 50,000 pictures. So I'm more and more convinced that, you know, through the cell phone, I might be able to achieve what, you know, what we, what we typically don't achieve with billions of fiber laid in the country and billions worth of PCs bought and so on and so forth. Umar, that's fascinating. So now we know. 